you're really educating your market and giving them valuable information that they otherwise wouldn't normally have. Welcome to CREPN Radio for influential commercial real estate professionals who work with investors, buyers, and sellers of commercial real estate coast to coast. Whether you're an investor, broker, lender, property manager, attorney, or accountant, we're here to learn from the experts. Welcome to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio. This is episode number 67. Weekly, we share interviews with real estate experts passing on their experience and knowledge. Thanks for joining us this week. My name is Jade Aaron Gross. We're so glad you're here. In just a minute, we're going to speak with Nick Rathall, creator of the 7-Hour Book. You know what's better than finding your next client? It's when your client finds you. And that's right. Uh, You're just doing your thing. The phone rings, and then there's somebody who has money, and they want to work with you. Whether you're an investor, a lender, a commercial real estate broker, property manager, accountant, attorney, or even an insurance broker, there are people searching for you. So how do you attract these potential customers? You have to put yourself out there so people can find you. If you are the best in your field, a true expert, listen up and you'll learn how Nick will tell you and he'll help you create a true magnet uh, to attract new business. Also, be sure to look in the show notes uh, because Nick has provided a link to five winning ideas for your book. But before we do, if this is your first time tuning in, we'd like to extend a special welcome to you. And uh, if you're a returning listener, thanks for coming back. Our goal at CREPN Radio is to learn more and connect with professionals and help you with your commercial real estate investing or your commercial real estate investing clients. A little bit about myself. I am a real estate investor. I'm also a commercial uh, property insurance broker. I've been a commercial property insurance broker for over 25 years, so I'm old. I've made mistakes, and I help my clients not make mistakes. My insurance clients are real estate investors and professionals dealing in multifamily, retail, warehouse, office, and development. And like I said, I'm also a real estate investor and have been for over 20 years. Uh, I'm always looking for more information about real estate so that I can either use in my business or also support my clients. The easiest way to reach me is if you go to commercialrealestatepronetwork.com and uh, go ahead and click on the contact uh, info button there, and uh, there's my phone and email. And uh, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to the program. It's real easy. You can do that on either iTunes or Stitcher. Just go to the uh, one you prefer, go ahead and click in the search bar, and type in Commercial Real Estate Pro Network. When you see our logo pop up, it's the headphones with CREPN between the ears. Go ahead and click subscribe, and you're done. Then when any new episode is posted, all you have to do is click download and shazam. You're listening to another episode of the show. Uh, if you're like me, my uh, some of my favorite places to listen are uh, whether I'm in the car or out on the bike for a ride or out walking the dog. Um, and uh, now just a little uh, quick, uh, quick note about insurance. Uh, like I said, I'm an insurance broker and just want to make sure you're aware of of some insurance stuff. It's not a topic a lot of people like to talk about. Trust me, I I know. Uh, But insurance is a part of any real estate transaction. And I just want to share with you uh, this scenario. So uh, uh, a little over a week or so ago, I had a a listener reach out to me. And uh, they're they're buying a a property that was built in the 70s. And uh, nice property, a great little property. I think it's going to do real well for them. The... The issue that came up in the inspection, and they shared the inspection with me, was that the electrical panel uh, in this, and actually the electrical panels, were the um, Federal Pacific brand Stablock. And these are notorious uh, electrical panels. In fact, uh, many insurance companies won't touch them. And the reason I bring this up is if you're in the position, you're out looking for a property, or if you have these in your property... Uh, be be full aware that these will become an issue when you go to sell. 
And uh, if you are in the position to be buying a property that has these and you know about this, you want to make certain you can do all you can to negotiate that repair uh, before you end up taking title of the property. Because, uh, like I said, a lot of insurance companies don't want to have anything to do with these. Um, the The action is different. If you know a, a normal circuit breaker, you flip it left or right or up or down, and that's the on position, and the opposite direction is the off position. And the stab lock ones are ones that you push in in for the on position, and then they're supposed to spring out for the off position. Well, that that action doesn't always happen. And what, what can happen is these things get overheated and they, they, uh, they have a fire. So anyway, just a, a little... Uh, little bit about there. In fact, I think what I'll do, I, I'm going to try and reach out to an electrician to uh, get him on the program here and talk a little bit about that. Uh, I think it'd be a good topic for all all uh, potential buyers. But anyway, enough about that. Um, if you are on LinkedIn, uh, I just want to remind you this. We, we have a group, Commercial Real Estate Pro Network. Go ahead and check it out. It's a great place to network with commercial real estate professionals. All right, let's get on with the show. On the line today with me, I'm fortunate to have my guest, Nick Rathel. Nick is a the creator of the 7-Hour Book. Uh, Nick, welcome to the program. Thanks a lot for having me here, Darren. Really appreciate the opportunity to uh, come on your show and share some valuable insights with your audience. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to uh, getting into this a little bit. Um, before we, we jump right into it, I want to kind of give the audience a little bit of a, a kind of a setup, I guess, if you will. Uh, I invited Nick onto the program. Uh, Nick is a, uh, well, he's got the, the book, the, the, or excuse me, he's the creator of the seven hour book. Uh, but in conversations with him and others, uh, recognize that many of us were, were experienced in what we do and we're, uh, we've done it for a number of years. We have a, a competency. We have a, a level of expertise. But beyond the interactions that we have with our prospective customers uh, or or customers, uh, and maybe some referral word of mouth, there's nothing nothing greater than that. We we don't have any kind of a presence that that outlasts outlast uh, that interaction. So uh, today we're going to get into uh, how we can change that, how we can uh, leverage our experience, and uh, Nick's going to uh, share with us how his company and uh, his uh, uh, seven-hour book uh, is an opportunity to do that. And uh, so, Nick, let's talk just a little bit uh, about, um, maybe I think probably the first place we start is, tell us what is the, the, the concept behind the seven-hour book and then we can kind of work through some some uh, uh, different. Well, let's just start there. All right. Well, the concept behind it plays to an irony of the real estate profession, and an irony that's probably facing many of the people listening to this. The irony being that you're dealing with properties, large properties, often. But the thing is. In doing so, you're not really recognizing the most valuable property that exists, at least to you, which is your own experience, your own life story, and your own background. And so it's kind of like you're sitting on that property while you're looking at another property. So that's sort of the core core idea behind the seven-hour book. All right. And uh, <clears throat> so essentially more of like an intellectual uh, kind of property or an experience-based property is what uh, kind of the, what, we're, what we're recognizing. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I would say it is. It's something as well that makes you unique. And then with respect to the actual seven-hour book itself, that's come about because to have this property – and put it to any kind of use, we found that the best way to do that is a book. But many of the people who come on board with us as clients and many people out there in general just don't have time. So that's where the seven-hour part comes in, where we make it much more efficient, 
and streamlined so that it only would take seven hours of your time. And let, let's let's back up here just a little bit here because um, the, w- what we're talking about is working with you. Uh, you would be able to help help a myself or any of the listeners produce a a book uh, demonstrating their knowledge. Is that is that what we're is that where this goes? Demonstrating their knowledge, but also becoming something greater. Becoming more than just another broker, more than just another lender, more than just another property manager or real estate professional. Really seizing the chance to put your most valuable asset, your most valuable property to work for you. And to attract new opportunities as well that you might not otherwise be able to have without a book. Such as, I'll give you some examples, coaching, consulting, those kind of things that you might want to do. You might see people speaking and think, I could do that. But without having a book, without having the platform and the visibility that one provides, that kind of an opportunity just won't be available. So again, it's the opportunity to really become something more through having this platform out there. So the, and, and I get it. I mean, obviously if somebody's authored something and there's a uh, paper with uh, ink on it and has, uh, you know, their words on the uh, the paper and it's been published uh clearly that that by itself uh creates authority uh you know i i get that um i'm curious if you can can you can you provide any kind of examples as to types of of uh, clients you've worked with as far as uh different subject material or um you know what, what you've seen your your successful customers who've taken it and uh, you know, ran with it. I mean, from from creating the book to to what you just spoke of, all the the different opportunities. Yeah, absolutely, Ken. Uh, one of the people we're uh, we're actually working with right now is looking to solve the problem he sees, which is that uh, people just aren't educated really about his company and what they provide in terms of a unique uh, real estate related investment opportunity. So in his case, he's carving out a completely fresh niche for himself, a niche that people normally wouldn't even realize is there. But he's carving this niche out, claiming it, and is potentially poised to go on to some speaking, go on to some coaching, uh, or at the very least, just get a whole lot more business and visibility for his own company. That would be one example of something someone who really is going to leverage the power of a book. Another example further along is someone who we've actually uh, we've actually totally worked through the process with, real estate agent up north. And uh, his deal is that he didn't even know that you could become uh, a kind of an information marketer, if you will, having his own podcast, having his own set of products, having his own book and other books. But he's been able to seize these opportunities and sort of create almost a mini publishing mill for himself, almost a mini information marketing empire through having this first step, having this first book, because it showed people he was the expert and then he ran with it. So let me ask you something, because I mean, I love books. I try and uh, read a little bit every night. Um, You know, one of the things that I think is is. uh, kind of the the first thing that I recognize is that there there are things that are well written and then there are things that are just written and uh, so if if I uh, you know wanted to pursue something like this and engaged your your uh, company how how does that how do we know that we're putting out you know a, a uh, something that's readable that's I mean I'm assuming that the the uh, you know myself or whoever it is that you would be speaking with, uh, you'd you'd be relying on them as far as the accuracy and the the uh, validity of, of what they speak of. But as far as I'm just talking about an actual sentence where the the words flow and it's not some sort of um, deal. How, how do you, how does the system work? Maybe you could get into kind of the nuts and bolts. The process itself takes place over seven what we call seven project hours. And those hours 
um, happen over Skype. So it's seven Skype sessions, basically, of one hour each, where we're getting the information from you or from whoever we work with. And going back and forth a little bit on those calls to really extract information. What we call it is exercising, kind of like The Exorcism. Remember that movie? Oh, yeah. It's a scary movie. And the process sometimes of getting a book out of your head can be scary, too. But when we work together on these kind of calls, pulling the book piece by piece, getting all the information out, we're then able to assemble it and then put the book itself together. So that's sort of how we extract the information and how we get all of the insights with respect to what you said about the quality. Um, that's definitely up to par. I mean, it's professional, professionally done copywriting. And that's not only, you know, not only legible, not only sentences well put together, but, but also designed and calibrated, if you will, to deliver the message and impact you want. And on that, I want to make a very important distinction. We are not a ghostwriting service. We put books together, we market those books, but we are not a ghostwriting service. And anyone listening to this who really wants a serious book doesn't want a ghostwriting service. They want a company or a service that's going to get their book out there and write it and construct it and market it in such a way that it gets results. It doesn't just have pretty writing. It doesn't just have stuff that sounds cute. Because those kind of books may make someone chuckle, may make a few people chuckle, but they're never going to get you speaking engagements. They're never going to get people actively thinking about you as an expert and really coming to you. They're not written with the marketing and the end goal in mind, and they're not designed to get results. Right. No, I, I, and that's kind of what I was curious about. I remember, um, oh, I can't remember. I, got, I mean, I can't remember, but I would say it was a couple of years ago. I got a, I got a, uh, it was a book from somebody and it was, you know, kind of a self-publishing kind of thing. And, and uh, I, you know, I, I appreciated the effort, but it was a, you know, kind of a, uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot of proofreading going on uh, kind of thing. And, and that's kind of what I was kind of trying to understand is that, you know, clearly this this needs to be professional because this is this is this is what you're putting out there is you and this, like you said, it will lead to uh, greater things provided uh, it's done properly uh, and received properly. Um, and it sounds like you guys can you tell a little bit about your your channels or how you how you go from I've done the seven hours, we've got the the printed material. How does the rest of that develop then? Do you guys do all the the marketing and that as well, or do you work with the the client uh, through that process? Yeah, we definitely handle it for the client, the marketing, but it's a collaborative process as well. So we have uh, various systems for doing the marketing, various expansions to our core seven hours, to our core seven-hour plan that we can develop with the client based on what they're looking for based on what uh, we might have happened to have used recently. That's, that's also, I want to point out, another, another plus with the seven-hour book in that those we work with aren't just getting our capabilities at present. They're getting the collected experiences and the collected strategies that we've tried with other people too. So it's kind of like a whole library in a sense of knowledge and library of experience. So uh, the experience in, in the marketing and that, and uh, it, what, and now I'm trying to quantify, I guess, on, on timeline as far as what, so if, if uh, someone were to engage with you, uh, you know, you invest the, the seven hours over a period of, I don't know, how many weeks would you expect uh, to do that? Sure. Well, the entire process is spaced out so it's manageable for the client and so that it's not in any way overwhelming to them because that's what we're trying to prevent by having it streamlined down in just seven hours. So to answer your question in terms of a timeline, typically our process takes about four to five sometimes months. So a given month 
might have two calls, two of those one-hour sessions, but it really is spaced out so that it's comfortable for the other people because we recognize that they're running a brokerage or they're running another form of real estate business where they have an outside job that they're working in. So we want this to be as painless as possible. Right. Um, do you find, and I'm just, uh, might be going backwards on this, so forgive me, but uh, do you find that the information that, that most people provide or, or that, that, I guess, uh, is uh, more uh, desirable or, or that uh, uh, converts better, I guess, for, uh, for the audience, uh, one of stories about uh, different situations or more technical or is there a is there a um, you know one way or another that that you recommend or that you recognize as being um, you know better better way to go I think it all depends on the client themselves I would say though that if people are looking to do a book there are a number of surefire ideas that you can almost always apply. I'll give you and your listeners a few right here. One of them would just be the very simple how I did it, which you then build off. And it's really all about you. You're kind of becoming the central figure in the book, talking about your experience, talking about your inner secrets, like how you did it. Another one that I think is pretty surefire is uh, what we can call lookout. And that's where you've identified common mistakes or problem spots within a particular niche. Or maybe, maybe you're also just ticked off about something. So ticked off and so tired of seeing people get fooled or make a common mistake again that you're writing kind of a lookout book. Examples of those might be 10 mistakes in whatever category. So it would be kind of from the angle of lookout. Uh, and then I think going a little bit toward what you might've mentioned when asking the question, having sort of a Q and a book where it really is based on what your clients have told you. So those are certainly ideas that uh, you can almost always supply in our kind of surefire, how you applied those, whether you did it with a story or not, that would also depend. So it really is sort of your choice, but there are some things that uh, are almost always applicable. So for for just kind of a, an outline for someone um, considering this, I mean, those are three tangible, uh, you know, ideas that you could uh, uh, pursue or, or identify with. I, I would think those that's a that's a pretty uh, recognizable uh, format there. Um. So a person, you know, engages, they, they go through the process. The, the end result is the, the books made available. Um, what, what kind of a presence? Because I, th- I think one of the things that I recognize more and more that all businesses face uh, is the challenge of marketing. And, you know, whether it be you've always had a Yellow Pages ad, if they even do that anymore, or... Uh, used to be, you know, coupons or newspapers. I mean, clearly a, a web presence is probably one of the uh, primary building blocks or cornerstones that you, that you really need to have in order to uh, even be a, a legitimate anymore. But so how do you do you recognize that somebody has to have certain elements in play first or is this kind of a, a, a point from which somebody can launch from uh does that make sense, or do you, do you do you coach them through that to to try and then uh, leverage the the book in, in in additional ways? We do, yes. And for us, it's not just about after the book is out. If anything, our approach emphasizes doing the platform building and doing the positioning while the book is being created. Because oftentimes, you can have a great book, but if you haven't built the audience while it's going, you're going to put the book out and nothing's going to happen. You're going to hear crickets. So it really is important to be building and developing your audience 
and sort of stoking the fires of demand while your book is being created. So then it's just ready to go. It can just launch and kind of, kind of quick start, if you will. Uh, that makes, uh, makes complete sense. Um, do you, uh, in your, your promotional efforts, do you, um, uh, get into, you know, Google AdWords and Facebook, uh, ads and all that kind of stuff as well? Or do you recommend that somebody do more of kind of a, an organic, uh, you know, grow their own presence, uh, first, or is there a, is there a rhyme or reason on that? I think it's going to depend again on the person and their particular markets and also what they want to get out of the book. Okay. Um, so the, the timeline, so five to six months for the, uh, to, uh, uh, produce the, the book, um, what on the, the, the speaking, uh, engagements in that, um, I mean, I, 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 you know, anytime I go see a speaker or something like that and they've got a book, I mean, there's usually some, you know, there's an opportunity to buy the book or in some cases, maybe the, uh, uh, the host of the, the event has bought some, some copies and is giving out free copies or, you know, anywhere, any of a number of ways, uh, for that to be distributed. Um, does that all kind of, is that lend itself as you were saying, you know, getting these, these speaking engagements and, and, uh, you know, so on. Is that, is that all kind of how your thing, or I mean, what you guys work with your clients to do? Yeah, we work to get them certainly in the positions where they can have that. Sometimes we might even be able to introduce them to people. I know that, uh, not just you, but, uh, I've also been in contact with plenty of other podcast hosts. I'm on a number of other podcasts regularly. And so I'm in a position from that to introduce people uh, and also to work through other Rolodexes and really connect to the people we're working with to opportunities to get out there and get visibility. So, yes, through those sort of things, we can certainly uh, certainly help them get into speaking. Is, is there any, you know, you, you've been, uh, you know, very clear in that it's up to up to the, the individual as far as uh, how this plays out. But is there any kind of a a uh an expected outcome on your end with somebody that were if if somebody was eager and they had a uh, uh you know they go through the, the process they get a book they've created a a uh a, uh an audience they uh you know they've got enthusiasm they're they're uh, articulate they're they're uh you know all of all of that what would you expect i mean as far as the the how would things change? I mean, it's one thing to have a book, but I'm wondering if if you can uh, give us kind of a look into what it what it looks like from where you are today, as opposed to what it looks like uh, once you've you've gone through this process and you've got a successful uh, you know book and you're you're out uh, you know out in the public. Uh, Promoting and also then uh, being recognized as as an author. Well, I think preface any of this by saying, as you rightly pointed out, that it will depend. But that being said, you might, for example, receive an invitation to travel to a conference, potentially one being held in Florida, potentially one being held in Las Vegas or Hawaii. And if you've done some speaking, you might be asked, in this case, to be a keynote speaker at that event, at that conference, being able not only to speak and address an audience of potential clients or of potential business partners in some way, but also to sell more copies of your book and get greater visibility. That would be one of the outcomes that you might get once or you might get regularly as a result of having this book out there. And having gone through the process, I think another one would just be greater visibility in your community itself. So you have a brand that speaks for you. You don't have to as much or even if you're really lucky and you really get out there ever 
introduce yourself much. There's not as much. What do you do when you're around those in your industry and those in your market? They know you. I would also add just another another outcome that uh, you could probably expect is the sense of satisfaction. I mean, there really is something that feels good about ha- having that physical thing, that thud factor, if you will, is a good way we describe the book because it, it literally makes a thud when you drop it on someone's desk. Having that and knowing that you're an author, knowing that uh, you've done this, that you, you've gotten yourself out there, you've put together your experiences, and you're really making a difference, not only for yourself and your company, but also just in educating people. You know, if the book really does contain valuable insights, and hopefully it does, then you're really educating your market and giving them valuable information that they otherwise wouldn't normally have. So there's a tremendous amount of satisfaction that comes with that. Yeah, no, I can only imagine. Um, let me ask you this, because I know one of the things I've kind of learned just with uh, being online and, and uh, you know, when you put yourself out there, there's the, the, the positive and also the the minus opportunities uh, from the standpoint of, of um, you know, the positives. Everybody adores you and everybody likes what you're saying and stuff. And then the, the flip side of that is is that you've got the uh, uh, the naysayers or the, the people that might nitpick or try and point out all the, the shortcomings. Do you have anything to say to people about that? I, I just I think that's one of the things that, that I've learned just with the more and more you put yourself out there that you've got to recognize that there are those people out there uh, but, but, you know, if you're going to put yourself out there, you, I, or I guess what I'm saying is this is I applaud anybody that's willing to put themselves out there, period. Uh, because it's, it, it's scary. I mean, you are putting yourself out there and there's always the opportunity for, for people to knit and pick and, you know, say you did it wrong or you didn't do it right or, uh, that is there any, any kind of uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it comes back to a saying. I'm probably going to butcher it a little bit here, but the surest way to avoid offending anyone is to do nothing. And the point in that is that uh, if you're going to do something like creating a book, like putting a podcast out there, like what you're doing, Darren, you're bound to have some people whose feathers are ruffled. You're bound to have some people who critique and nitpick, as you've said. But that does just come with the territory. And would you rather stunt your own evolution as a broker, as a lender, as a real estate professional? Or would you rather worry about hypotheticals, about people who might be offended? No, I, I think you're, you're spot on. Is You know, it's uh, uh, you, you just got to go through it and just let go of it. And, you know, it's always going to be there's always going to be somebody that doesn't or that finds reason to nitpick or whatever, or, you know, I didn't do this right, or, you know, this is too, too that, or too that, or too this, or, um, well, but... You see, it as, you see it as well with uh, some speakers. When people leave comment cards for speakers, you'll have a speaker, for example, who's just delivered an incredible hour, an incredibly mesmerizing talk. And then on the comment cards, some people write, well, your, your clothes didn't look good. Or why did you wear that shirt? It's like the speaker just gave tremendous value, tremendous insight, tremendous motivation. And that's all the people who are writing on the comment card can think of. So it's the same sort of thing there. You know, put yourself out there, deliver value, and that will carry you regardless of what people say. Right. In that minority. No, I, 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 uh, I recognize that, and and uh, I don't welcome it, but I recognize it's out there, and and I think many times it says uh, as much or more about them than it does uh, you or or whoever it is putting themselves out there. There's something going on with them that they they feel the need to uh, uh, inflict this superiority uh, thing or or you know point out your flaws, and I'm sure they have none. So, um, but anyway. Um, Nick, I I I, uh, I like the uh, the concept, and I think that anybody that you know is is uh, you know in real estate or anything else, if you've got 
uh, experience and you're looking for a way to differentiate yourself and really set yourself apart, um, I, I think the, uh, the platform of becoming an author uh, is, is, a, is a great way to go. And uh, I know I've, I've talked with uh, uh, several other uh, you know, podcast guys I know that have done this and uh, there is a there's a noticeable um, just a different reception that they receive once you've once you've authored something you are recognized differently and uh, I think that uh, everything you've talked about is is uh, valid and and uh, anybody looking to do so I would think would benefit greatly. So Nick, is there? Is there anything that uh, we didn't touch on that you'd like to uh, uh, address before we wrap up? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that anyone who's thinking about a book really just needs to sort of think about what their life would be like after the book is out. Perhaps getting some of the opportunities that we've talked about here perhaps getting other ones that are even better or even more beneficial to them, really think about and kind of picture where a book can take them. And when they do that, I think they're going to really like what they see, really like kind of the ideas that come to mind and really see that a book makes sense. All right. And Nick, uh, for those who would like to uh, get in touch with you, what's the best way for them to uh, get in touch with you? Well, they can visit our website at www.contentcore.net, and that is spelled content, C-O-N-T-E-N-T, core, C-O-R-P-S, dot net. Got it. Well, Nick, thank you so much for uh, being on the show, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Thanks for having me, Darren. It's been a pleasure. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, If you've ever considered writing a book, but you've not yet started, if you have the knowledge that can help people, what's stopping you? Uh, Be sure to get the the, uh, winning, excuse me, be sure to get Nick's five winning ideas for your book. Uh, That's from Nick Rathall, creator of the Seven Hour Book. Uh, It's a great little opportunity there for you. And if it's something you've been considering doing, now's your chance. That's all we've got for you today. We know you're busy. We thank you for making time for us. We do appreciate you. Until next time, thanks for listening to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio. You're listening to CREPN Radio for influential commercial real estate professionals. For more information on this or any of our guests, like us on Facebook, CREPN Radio.